you're viewing my channel for the first time, I want to take a moment and show you some photographs of what my property looked like when I purchased it back in 2014. Now the property had sat vacant for several years. The previous owner had passed away and the family did not want to deal with it. So the house went into probate and I purchased the house and the land for $10,500 that did not come without a lot of hard work. All the belongings were still inside. The land was just overgrown. Nature was taking it back. There was trash everywhere on the land, around the cabin. Everywhere you looked, there was trash, years worth. All the walls inside the cabin were covered in a thick yellow nicotine. They were heavy smokers. All the sheetrock had to be ripped out. The plumbing was in bad shape. All that was ripped out. I ripped out all of the electrical. Everything had to be taken down to the bare studs. It then began the long process of rebuilding the cabin. Fifty to a hundred dollars at a time. <laughs> That's right. I didn't have any money at the time, so I just worked when I had it. And it has taken eight years to get it to the point where it is now. And in this video, you will see that I have embarked on building an addition to the back, which has a screen patio, an upper deck, and a laundry room slash dog apartment. A place where my dogs can come in, have air conditioning, and have heat and get out of the weather. So enjoy the video. Happy trails. One of the first projects of 2022 was building a new staircase. I had tore down the previous stairs as they were dangerous and steep. I also had to build new loft railings and also guard railings on the stairs. Uh, I used rebar that I had painted black as kind of an accent. You can see here I'm getting everything leveled up. Uh, previously I had not used the loft until this year because uh, if I needed to get up there, I would have to put a ladder up there. It was very dangerous getting up there. So it was well time I built stairs. Took several weeks to complete the staircase and all the railings. Uh, and actually it's still not complete. It needs some minor details. I used reclaimed cedar from a neighbor's porch that I had demolished uh, a few months before that. Uh, cedar is a material that you can run through a table saw and looks good as new and that was the case with this cedar. And sometimes you just got to use your brain. If you're on a budget you can come up with ideas that are inexpensive. Uh, the two foot pieces of rebar were about $1.50 a piece. So it certainly didn't break the bank. Took a little spray paint made them black. And you can see here just drilled a few holes. Put them in level, and there you go. The next big project of 2022, I had a couple friends come over and remove some tall, 
deadly pine trees. I could not wait to get those down. They were very close to the cabin. As a matter of fact, a few days later we had a major storm that took a bunch of my trees down and those most certainly would have fell. And I immediately began cutting up these trees. It took probably two, maybe three weeks. Had a couple friends show up, help me burn up. We burnt most of this up. There's not, not much you can do with it. I mean, it's pine, it's not the best wood. I don't have any wood burning fireplaces or anything like that, so I had no use for it. Uh, it was a lot of work. A lot of backbreaking work, but man, it was worth it. I'm glad those trees are gone. One was only 10 feet away from the cabin, and it was leaning over the cabin. Like I said, a storm come through uh, probably four days later, and that whole line of trees, it took four of them out. It would have most certainly taken the one by the cabin out and probably put it right over my cabin and on top of me. And the next project of the year, building the addition, the screen patio, the laundry room dog apartment, and the upper deck. And man, was I in for a surprise with the weather that was to come and come soon. And on May 10th, I had the first delivery of building materials delivered. The 14 foot 6x6 six six posts, the metal roofing. Uh, I believe I had a bunch of 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x12s. Uh, it was the first of three deliveries, and then not to, not to mention all the lumber I had to go pick up myself. Uh, I sorely miscalculated on how much material I would need. The day I broke ground, it was 90 degrees. That is very high for the second week in May. And I realized right then, this was going to take me a while. And it did. Doing projects by yourself sometimes requires a lot of thinking. The 6x6, six 14-foot six, posts are not light. So I just figured the best way to do it was lay them where the hole was and walk them up, throw them in, and it seemed to work. These things are extremely heavy. At this point, I had realized how hot the summer was going to be, and this motivated me to hurry up and get this structure framed so I could get the walls and the ceiling on the dog apartment so I could put the air conditioner in and get the dogs in an air-conditioned room. They're older dogs, and the heat is very hard on them, so I did a lot of sweating.
After all the roofing joists were in place and the metal roofing on, it was time to start framing the screen patio. Before the laundry room dog apartment could be framed, the screen patio had to be finished. This also gave me a much needed shaded area to work in and to store my tools and out of the rain, which at this point we were not getting any more rain for a long time. So I tried to work as many hours a day as I could on this until the heat got to me or I just plain wore out. Now these structures were being built on existing foundations. One was a foundation for the old laundry room and the other one was a very poorly poured foundation that primarily was used for a hot tub. Uh, it had different thicknesses throughout, uh, big rocks sticking up through it, but it was too big to remove. So I figured I would do the best I could that is where the dog apartment and laundry room now stand. <laughs> it's not a very nice floor, but it is a solid foundation. Building this addition had been in my plans for a long time. And lumber prices and all material prices were up probably 60-70%. But what do you do? I said I can wait and maybe the lumber prices will come down or I can just eat it and go ahead and build it and at this time the prices have came down a little but not enough to justify waiting so I'm glad that I did it I'm not getting any younger it was hard enough to do this as it was so I don't have any regrets and it did cost probably three times the price it would have several years ago but what doesn't getting this wall up was important before I could start framing the laundry room and the dog apartment as it was a common wall between the screen patio and the laundry room. And after this wall is assembled, then I can start framing out the dog apartment laundry room. And now the temperatures were getting close to 100 degrees. So I had to get out early because once out in that sun, it was hard to get anything done. After having heat stroke one time, after that, it's hard to work in any kind of hot weather. Putting up walls on a foundation that is out of square, that is not level, that has stone sticking up out of it, a hand poured foundation is not an easy task. And I'm still dealing with issues from that to this day. Although I know I'll get them corrected. If I could do it over, I would have probably rented a jackhammer and knocked all this out. But again, it was 100 degrees out, so any any kind of activity such as that uh, would have would have been nearly impossible for me. So I decided to go ahead and frame the building on this foundation. Uh, I did go a little short of the end of the foundation because at that point it was really out of square and level. But I just got it as level as I could. I had to shim it up in places. Other places <laughs> better than others. One of the biggest challenges of doing this addition is I'm building it on the back of an A-frame cabin. So you're limited in the shapes that you can make it. And my idea was to have the metal roof the same pitch as the roof of the cabin. And as you can see, I did 
did a pretty decent job matching that up. Uh, this would be a two-tiered roof. Uh, not necessarily was my first choice of an idea, but it worked out. And there's one section of the dog apartment that is lower in ceiling and one that is higher. Now at this point in the build, the temperatures are already at 100 degrees. So I'm coming out early in the morning, only working two, three, maybe four hours at the most. Uh, it's getting to the point where being out in the open sun is almost impossible. And so my goal is right here is to get these walls on and get the air conditioning put in so I can get these dogs in there for the summer. And I'm almost there. I just need one more section of roof on here. And basically, I just wanted to get it dried in so no weather would get in there, at least limited. Then it was time for the dogs to come in. I just had a few things to finish up. Wanted to make sure that the air conditioning stayed in the best it could without the insulation being on yet. But it was still cooler than it was outside and it gave them quite a bit of shade. So just putting on the last few pieces of T111. T111, actually I ran out of the stuff that I had and I had to go buy some local. It wasn't a complete match, but after it was painted, you can't even tell the difference. Somebody, look at your apartment. Look at your beds. Look at your beds. Yeah, boy, they're excited. Let me put the fan on. Look at your beds. Don't pee on nothing, Waldo. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's cool in here. Let me get the water. You want a nice view? Here, get on your bed. Come on, over your top. Come on. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, let me go sit. Let me sit with you. Yeah. You don't know, those are nice beds. Get your ice cubes. Look at this, sitting and petting them. Then when I let the dogs in and saw their reaction, it made all the sweat, all the cut fingers, everything worth it. And I've raised these babies, since, these dogs since they were babies. So I know when they're happy and when they're not. And they were certainly happy that they had their own place, that they could come in and have air conditioning and have beds and get out of the weather and it made me feel good that I was able to do that for them. Now the next step was to install the screen on the screened in patio. I used the screen tight system. Uh, when you're renovating a home, you're gonna do a lot of things you've never done before. So it helps to research it. Uh, watch a lot of videos. Uh, I watched several videos on using this particular system. Uh, most of those videos made it seem a lot harder than it actually was. Uh, once I got the hang of it, it went pretty well. 
I think anybody could use this uh, particular product and uh, do pretty well. I had to pull it off a few times the, the first few times I tried until I figured out the best way to do it. But like I said, when you're renovating your own property, you want to do these things yourself and save money, well, you just, we all have that ability to do it. You just got to put your mind to it and do it. There's nothing hard about it. The hardest part is being willing to want to learn. And once you get past that, there ain't no stopping you, man. Now, building something by yourself is one thing. When you do a YouTube channel and you got to make videos on everything you do, well, that's another ball game. So not only are you doing work, but you're filming, you're filming the work that you're doing. And you want to make that look as good as you can. And yes, yeah, some of my shots aren't the best. And I did not cover a lot of the things I did. You just can't. You can't cover everything you do. You have to pick the points that are important. And those are the points you film. But it is enjoyable. And I don't mind doing it. And it's a good way to document everything that I've done. And there's many times I've had to come back and look. Hey, how did I do this? Or where is that? Now, a lot of the products that I use in the edition, I ordered online, mostly through Amazon, especially things I couldn't find here locally or were too expensive. And this Smart Shield insulation was one of those. Now, this stuff is less than a quarter of an inch thick, but it holds an R15 uh, value, I believe. It is very lightweight, very easy to work with. You have aluminum foil on both sides, so you don't have the itchiness that comes with fiberglass insulation. Uh, you just simply put it up there and you staple it on. It has little flaps that fold out. It makes it very nice. And then the 100 degree temperatures were here to stay. I spent almost all of July and all of August inside, unable to work because the heat was just too much. And when it cooled down, in late September, I believe it was, I started the deck. The upper deck above the screen patio. And that proved to be the most difficult of all. Simply because I had to get on my hands and knees. My knees are bad. My back is bad. I could only get down for a little bit at a time. But I got it done. It took me a few days. But I just hammered away at it. The boards had gotten pretty warped from sitting all summer. They were not easy to work with. But I found a way to get them straight and get the deck down. And the rest is history. Now it's time to slap on some paint. I wanted it to match the rest of the cabin, so that's the color I chose. It's also going to have the same black trim as the cabin has. There's also going to be an awning above this door on the screen patio. I just haven't got to doing it yet. You get involved with so many projects other than the build. Some things have to go on the back burner. But the main thing was getting everything dried in and waterproof. And once that's done, then you got a little time to breathe. I couldn't remember the name of the paint that I used on the cabin so I had to take a wild guess at it by looking at the cards the sample cards and uh, usually they store that in the computer at the place where I buy paint but somehow it was no longer in there I did however find the right color of black because I had a can of black laying around that had the name on it I did have some of the tan color laying around but you could not read the label and I didn't know what the name was but 
It's been a few months after painting and you can't tell the difference. It's a pretty good match. And this video is just a highlight of the projects I've done over the year, mostly the dog apartment, screen patio, and the deck. Those were the big projects of the year. Uh, if you wanna watch the full videos, you can go back. I have all the videos from the day I started until where I am now. Uh, not pictured in here is the electrical and the plumbing work. Uh, those are recent and very simple to go back and watch those. And I wanna thank all my viewers who have been loyal and watch my videos over the past year and before that without you this wouldn't be half as fun I'd like to wish everybody a happy and prosperous 2023 I hope everybody has enjoyed this video uh, if you'd like to go back and watch some of the other videos, there's other things I do. Some are just plain silly. Some are interesting. Some may not be. Pick the videos you like and watch them. And I strive to try to make better videos all the time. Get better equipment. Make sure the quality is good. Good, clean, fun. That's my motto. Everybody have a great holidays and happy new year. Happy trails.